Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The larger and heavier the vehicle, the harder it is to bring to a stop. Combine this with the constantly moving ocean and the challenges of anchoring a 100,000 ton aircraft carrier in place become very evident. Fortunately, the technology that goes into anchors, chains and the mechanisms that deploy them has been advancing for decades. The result is a system that is simultaneously complicated and simple. First, the anchor itself weighs around 30,000 pounds, while the chain, which is roughly 1,400 feet long, boasts links that weigh roughly 136 pounds each. When retracted, the chain is held in place by two huge windlasses and a metal pin. Once this pin is removed and the windlass is unlocked, the chain begins plummeting towards the bottom of the sea. There are brakes attached to the windlasses to help slow the anchor as it falls. These must be applied with just the right timing due to the immense weight of the overall ground tackle system. There are two anchors in all to help ensure as little movement as possible when the ship is anchored. The process of lowering and raising the anchor takes place in an area known as the mooring deck which is connected via vertical compartments to a storage area called the chain locker. This is where the hundreds of feet of the chain are stored when the anchor is not deployed. In addition to the anchor windlass, Sailors must use a heavy rope system to help haul the anchor up into place. These ropes are attached to a series of internal moorings and can weigh hundreds of pounds, especially when wet. These heaving lines are found aboard many large naval ships, not just aircraft carriers. It can take up to a dozen sailors working and pulling in unison in order to haul and tie off these massive ropes once they're in place. In order to ensure both the equipment and the crew members operating it are running smoothly, the U.S. military conducts frequent anchor drop tests. For instance, anchor chains are typically measured in shots, with one shot equaling 15 fathoms. These shots are indicated by special color-coded links which help the windlass operator determine how much chain is left. During an anchor test, the anchor will be dropped and stopped several times over to ensure the windlass breaks, known as wildcats, are doing their jobs. As important as it is to maintain the equipment that controls the chain, it's equally important to inspect and potentially repair the chain itself regularly. Oh. 
This means manually removing the entire chain while ashore, so its length is laid out. This allows crew members to see the various color markers indicating depth. The main chain is black, but in between sections of white painted links, there will be a single red or blue link, which is detachable. The more white on either side of the red, the deeper the chain. As the chain gets closer and closer to the end, the links will turn yellow, then red. Despite their large size, the flight deck of an aircraft carrier is by no means stable, especially when the ship encounters bad weather. Nevertheless, in order to operate at full capacity, most aircraft carriers need to store multiple aircraft on their deck. To keep them in place, they use a combination of wheel chocks and restraints. Wheel chocks are wedges of sturdy material placed against the plane or helicopter's tires. If they do move forward or backward, it won't be enough for the wheels to push over the wedges, thus keeping the aircraft more or less in place. The chains are even more important to this process than the chocks, though they are almost always used at the same time. Modern aircraft carrier decks feature a variety of metal pad eyes, to which special chains can be attached. In order to avoid damaging the fuselage of the aircraft, these chains are typically applied to the wheels. Once they are done taxiing, flight crews will restrain the planes or helicopters as quickly as possible. It only takes one rogue wave to send a multi-million dollar aircraft tumbling into the ocean. In order to minimize movement, multiple chains will be applied to a single tire and tightened as much as possible. For flight crews aboard aircraft carriers and amphibious assault ships, the opposite process is just as important. Before taxiing or takeoff, flight deck crews must quickly untether the aircraft from its current position. To aid in this process, the Navy uses special single-piece adjustable chocks that are connected by a single bar down the middle. This greatly minimizes the time it takes to free the wheels while reducing the chances of the chocks being lost. Any vehicle with wheels can move if subjected to unintended force. That's why wheel chocks are used as frequently on land as they are at sea. To reduce weight, wheel chocks can be made of wood or hard plastic, 
but most modern designs utilize steel to maximize durability. Though keeping a plane from moving on the tarmac or flight deck is difficult, bringing a moving plane to a stop poses a completely different problem. Indeed, when it comes to both military and commercial flights, most accidents happen as the plane lands, rather than in the air. If brakes fail or an aircraft is forced to land on a runway that's too small due to an in-flight emergency, it can be nearly impossible to bring the machine to a complete and safe stop. In recent years, innovative companies have developed a system known as EMOS, which stands for Engineered Materials Arrestor System. It's a bed of special collapsible material that resembles wet cement. When placed at the end of the runway, EMOS can absorb tens of thousands of pounds of energy. This causes it to crumble under the aircraft's wheels, bringing it to a safe stop. And since the EMOS system is modular in design, airports only need to replace the blocks that are affected by the landing, saving time and money. Energy absorption is important at all times when it comes to aircraft. Too much strain placed on the aircraft's landing gear or the landing surface can cause stress fractures that cause significant damage. Recently, militaries worldwide have experimented with special energy absorbing pads, which can be delivered, deployed, and set up in just a few hours. Such pads would prove integral to forward operating bases where safe landings can prove particularly difficult. In recent years, the U.S. military has considered a variety of new applications to deal with runaway planes or aircraft that might be unable to come to a safe stop. One particularly inventive solution is the BAK-12. This is similar to the arresting system used aboard aircraft carriers but it's designed specifically for land. Yeah. And it makes it twice as hard. Yeah. It includes a wheeled cable stretched across the runway. Oh be the, best job in the, world. the cable is attached to a multi-disc rotary friction energy absorber. When the aircraft comes in for a landing, it deploys a tail hook that catches on the cable, transferring the plane's energy to the BAK-12 unit. It's estimated that the unit can absorb up to 180 knots of force, which means it can safely stop a plane moving at up to 207 miles per hour. Aircraft safety is essential to any military organization's mission, especially during the highly dangerous landing process. Similarly, aircraft carriers and other large vessels must be able to secure themselves to the ocean floor to prevent damage during anchoring or an emergency at sea. Eventually, the safety of the enlisted men and women is paramount to the U.S. military at all times. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.